is unless you can give me an example of how mercy can be displayed without a subject, then you are acknowledging that Allah requires a subject to display his mercy, and that means there is a dependence. Those attributes and those qualities don't apply to Allah when he shows rahim and mercy to his creation, then to make an analogy of it being uh, uh, something that is ununderstandable in the worldly sense, then therefore can't apply to God. And I am yet to meet the Muslim that can show me where Muhammad gives the definitions of the 99 names of Allah. Can you show me where Muhammad tells you what al-warif means. The, the words have to be analyzed here. The word warif, the word rahman. You can't apply a human linguistic understanding of dependency and codependency. It doesn't work like that. Number two, the fact that God does do that and that Allah does show mercy to his creation after bringing them to existence is all within the remit of mercy. Well, okay, so, can't be so show, me, show me where the Quran defines al-warif then. So, so, no, the, no, no, so the Arabic. But he was explaining to the Arabic. So the no, no. The, I've got the Arabic explained right here okay, go ahead. by an Islamic website. Okay, Al Warith, which has the classical Arabic connotations to inherit, to be an heir, a survivor, to be the owner or sustainer after someone. Okay. So that's what the Arabic is saying about Allah. Okay. Right. That Arabic simply does not make sense. As he explains to you, the meaning of that word is yes. not just simply inheritor. What There's does it mean? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, Arab. Uh, I'm not I, I, Arab. I, I, I don't. I've got uh, it here. I've got the Arabic, Arabic here. Do you, would you like to jump in, sir? Jump in, brother. Jump yeah. in. Jump in, inshallah. The one who remains after all creation yeah. has perished. There's no problem with that at all. The one to whom all returns. returns. Yeah. Right. So what you're trying to say to me is uh, returns from who? Returns from returns from so far. For example, in this dunya, Allah has given you possessions. So at the end of it, it will all return back to Allah. But doesn't Allah already own those possessions? Of course, He does. So how can He inherit them? Look, I they will say one thing. The word in Arabic, all, all Arabic words come from three triliteral roots, right? Yeah. So the word here come is, 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 is waratha, right? Yeah. Now the word warith is one of Allah's name. It's a hyperbole. It means extreme, right? Extreme form of whatever it is. And in this case, it means waratha has different meanings. I'll give you an example of where the word warith has been used. Al ulama a waratatul anbiya. This means that the scholars are inheritors of the Prophet. Yeah. What that means is that the prophets leave behind something or yes. they are used by someone else as well. That yeah. doesn't presuppose that the knowledge that came from the, the prophets or the scholars now own something yeah. that was there previously. It was there previously. It can be transferred. Now, Allah's names are obviously unique to God, number one. Yeah. Number two, they're not meant in the um, linguistic or liturgical sense as they are for common people. So when you say inheritor, it obviously means if I inherit from you, you no longer have it. Yeah. And I'm dependent on this person giving it to me. Yes. Yeah. That's not necessarily true for the names of God. For example, God is Rahim. Right? Yeah. God is merciful. Yeah. Does that mean that, that what now God's mercy is dependent on someone else being or showing mercy or having mercy? For example, if I'm merciful, I'm dependent on that person person to show mercy too. You can only show mercy. It's an intransitive verb. Yep. It's saying that it's done upon someone else. Yes, exactly. So if you say that you are merciful, yep. for you and me to be merciful, sorry, for you and me to be merciful, that means we are dependent on something else to show mercy too. Agreed. However, with God, God is not dependent on the creature to show mercy. Okay. That is God's mercy in itself that the creature has come into existence and that God is able to manifest his magnificence, his mercy and his attributes upon that thing. Mary it's not Clark? it's not a di it's not a dial it's not a um, one to one way. correlation. It's not a one to one correlation and it's not a dependent slash codependent relationship. Okay, allow me to reply to that. Yeah, I'm sorry if I reply. Go ahead. Okay. So the the the, the you, you use the analogy of someone the, the ulama inheriting the knowledge of the Prophet. Yeah. The problem with that analogy to your argument is that obviously that means that the, there, there is a possession of the Prophet and then a possession of the ulama. That of means in, in the terms of the knowledge, it's gone from one to the other. The, the reality is that you, the, the contradiction that I'm pointing out here is that Allah is already described as al-Malaki which means that he already owns everything, which means that there's nothing for him to inherit. It is a contradiction in terms. Now, then you argued, your next dog, and, and I don't think you, your analogy escapes that problem. I actually think that it just doubles down on the contradiction that I've presented. Your next argument was to say that 
this language um, shouldn't be taken as literal. But the, re the, 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 the problem with that is that if language doesn't have any uh, act, common usage, when, when Muhammad gives a revelation, the Quran, and the Quran is meant to be clear guidance and light, remember that's how the Quran describes itself as clear guidance on, on, and explaining all things. That's what the Quran describes itself as being. If in the next breath the Muslim scholars that come later are saying that the words of the Quran can't be taken as they are heard, then that means, let me finish, that means that the Quran's self-description is flawed, right? And the third problem, the third problem is that if you, you said that Allah doesn't depend on his creatures for anything, including his mercy, but this, this, this is actually another contradiction within the descriptions of Allah. Allah is Al-Rahman. Mercy requires a subject, but Allah is also described as al Ghaniya. al Ghaniya means that Allah is free from all dependence. But mercy by its very nature requires a subject, which means that Al-Rahman means that Allah is not al Ghaniya. Well, no. Okay, I'll retort now. The first thing is, the first point you mentioned is that the Quranic verses uh, need interpretation or something to that effect and that they're not clear. They're not what you said was clear proofs. Again, we need to have terminology defined here. Number one, the Quranic verses themselves are open for um, limited interpretations and I'll tell you why that is. The words of the Quran haven't changed. The root words, like I said to you, like in English you have a, a root word. In Arabic it's a lot more uh, entrenched and it's a lot more specific. So for example, the root words, Malak, Mim, Lam and Kaf in Arabic language. That's the same word whether you read it in one translation or another translation. The root is the same. So there's a finite number of interpretations. It's not unlimited, number one. Number two, interpretations and tafsir, as we call it, are commentaries, is not a weakness of the Quran. It's actually a way of expounding and allowing a deeper understanding. It's also applicable and understandable for the common man to use. Because that's why the Quran is considered to be absolute. It's something that is accessible to the layman, yet there's enough intricacies and detail that if you want to further study it, you can. Hence why the need for tafsir, the allowance for um, linguistic analyses of the Quran. But again, they are finite and they're within a certain boundary. That doesn't change the meaning of the verse into something contradictory. You're saying now the names of God are themselves uh, contradictory or they are uh, antithesis of each other. That, that's my true. thesis. Yes, the, 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 yeah. the Islamic theology yeah. and therefore Islamic spirituality, which is the 99 names, has contradictions within it. And we've got two examples on the table. Okay. Al-Maliki al-Warif, okay. al-Ghaniya, al-Rahman. Yeah. Now, first thing is that, again, the, the words have to be analyzed here. The word Warif, the word Rahman. You can't apply a human linguistic understanding of dependency and codependency. It doesn't work like that. Warif and the meaning of inheritor and inheritance, that doesn't apply in the common way that it does to human beings. Because then you're presupposing that it's a dependence on something else. Now, you're right. There was no creation at one time in Islamic theology. And God created it. That's why there's a saying of God that I was a hidden treasure and I created creation to manifest and this is the you know wording to manifest the blessings or the favors of God. So this is within the realm of Allah's creation that he created creation in order to disseminate Al these attributes. Al Al it's not it's not on the basis of a weakness. It's not on the basis of reciprocity and it's on the basis of need. No, if, no, if no, you can, do I, can I reply to well, that? I'll just say one yeah. thing. If you have children, for example, yeah. that doesn't presuppose that you're weak or that you now need um, something else to continue your lineage based on your weakness or your mortality. Can I reply to that now? Okay, go ahead. Because, because it, it, it seems to me that none of this is escaping my criticism. Which is? But, well, firstly, you've now added yet another the example of Allah's uh, Allah's dependence to because you've just said that Allah created to demonstrate his power demonstrate. the words to the words to those effects I don't okay. want to misquote you and I, right. those may not be your exact okay. words but it was along those lines of that by the act of creation it was to demonstrate something or to to display something which contradicts the very idea whenever an action has a subject like mercy it contradicts the idea of total independence, which is what is affirmed by Muslim scholars yeah. when they talk about al -Ghaniya. Now, I'm not being unfair there, am I? That is what Muslims talk about no, no, when so they talk about al yeah, They but, say yeah. a complete lack of dependence. Lack of the need of dependence. La no, 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 need, no. Need of dependence. We can pull it up what they say. 
Well, can the, pull it what they say. But let me just go to your supposition of what you're saying. The supposition what you're saying with these names is that you're applying human analogy to it. Number one, you're assuming, because there's an assumption there. The assumption is that there is a need for God to do this in order to manifest these qualities. There's no need. If you have children, for example, or you do something, it, the, 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 there's a need for you based on uh, character, personality, flaws, arrogance, pride, uh, self, self-centeredness. These aren't the reasons why God does the things that he does. Okay, but that, that is not consequential to my argument. The, 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 your, your, your counter argument ignores completely what my argument is. Well, your my argument, argument that is that there are... No, no, no. My argument is the rational contradictions. Now, rational contradictions are not comparing um, Allah to the created. Rational contradictions are simply that they are logically contradictory statements about a subject. No. So the, the subject in this instance is the Quran statement about Allah. The Quran states Allah is al Ghaniya. The Quran states that Allah is Al-Rahman. Yes. You have already identified yes. in this conversation, yes. and I'm sure you're going to do it again, that mercy requires a subject. If mercy requires a subject, yes. then by definition, by definition, right. Allah is not al Ghaniya because there is a codependence for the expression of his mercy. No, but the, the, like there is a, dis, a, de, a, an ex, a, a dependence on creation to display his power. I know, but that doesn't mean... That and that's contradictory. There's not a dependence because that is within the realm of God's creation. For God to create something and manifest his mercy on that creation is not showing the dependence of God upon the creation. It's showing the dependence of the creation upon God. So yours making the circular argument that because God's created it in the first place, therefore God is now becoming weak because he needs that thing. I never mentioned weak. You you well, keep throwing this word weak in there. I've never okay, but said you're it. saying dependence then, yeah? Because you're saying your argument argument is of transitive and intransitive. The fact that mercy is something that requires something to manifest mercy on. You're confusing. No, no, but that's what you said. No, yeah. no, no. You are confusing the words dependence and the words weakness. So what are you saying? I am not saying. A man, a man who is, whose heart is filled with love, right. doesn't have any weakness in him for loving someone else. Okay. But he does require someone else to love. Okay. Right. So the, the, the confusion between dependence and weakness, right. we, we've now put out of this conversation. Okay. So because, what's your point? Right, right. Yeah. So my point is, yeah. there are rational, logical, non sequitur statements right. that are all given to the same subject yes. in the Quran, right. meaning that there are contradictory statements okay. in the Quran about Allah. Now, let, okay. me, let me go into my point. For you to get out of this issue, the way that you need to get out of this issue is to show me how someone can be uh, someone can display his mercy without a subject. Meaning something to manifest their mercy on. Yeah, with with because mercy is by definition a transactional uh, relation, is it not? Okay. So, so what given it, what what is mercy? Give me an example well, of is, mercy. Is, is, similar to what you're saying, yes, I agree, but I still don't understand how that contradicts the fact that if God is showing mercy upon a creation that he initially created himself, yes. then that shows a certain amount of, what was the word that you used? So, right. That, no, well, that shows a certain dependence. amount of dependence. Yes. Yeah, because dependence means that, well, what does dependence mean? Now, let's break down the word dependence. If you use the word dependent, yep. right, that means that there's weakness. No, it doesn't. It does. We just demonstrated that it doesn't. No, but dependence means that you need something else in order to fulfill something upon yourself. And, and no, no, weakness does not mean that. Dependence means that, yeah, but, but that, not weakness. Okay, but that's the, the word. A person can be weak in many things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it looks like we're having another fight. Sorry, bro. Yeah. Another fight at Speaker's Corner. It would appear that our little thug as once let's, again let's, let's take a break there. picked a fight. Let's take a break there. I just want to say I really appreciate your demeanor no, no, and, and do, the, the way that you have a conversation. Well. No, no, your too. I do appreciate it. But I think let's take a break. Are you now. wanting to stop? I think so. No, just no, for now. Sorry, just for now. We can continue our conversation right, if you right, want. Right, so, so my point is, just like, one more. so, so my, I, I, I want to, I, I want to get this clear. I am not yeah. suggesting yeah. that this, this logical non sequitur okay. means that I'm accusing Allah of weakness. Okay. I accept. Yeah that nothing in Islamic theology yep. teaches that Allah is weak. But it's dependence okay? on the issues. But dependence yeah. it is not connected to weakness. A person can okay. be strong and still dependent. Yes. Right? Yes. And you, you, you already have ad acknowledged that, um, particularly for relational transactions, mm. that by necessity, and that's the key word in all of this, by necessity, there must be another. 
In other words, we cannot conceive of something without the other, yeah. which means that Allah, by necessity, right. To express his mercy requires a subject. Okay. And you... that is dependence okay. which contradicts al -Ghania. Okay, now the Maoli issue with that is that when you look at the word mercy, you talk about dependence, right? Dependence does imply a certain amount of weakness. And I'll tell you why I'm not letting go of those two things. When you say something is dependent on something else, you look at any example of dependence, a child is dependent on his parents, right? That is because of and out of need. Because the child is weak and it cannot survive in itself. Now, when you're saying that the parent is now showing mercy towards that child, it is out of weakness, the weakness of love, the weakness of the fact that it needs a, 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 a necessi necessitates the fact that that parent now needs to take care of that child. Otherwise, they would be labeled as uh, criminal people or social services recording, or there could be repercussions. You can't apply that analogy now of dependence and needing reciprocity or needing a subject to manifest mercy to God. Because first of all, those relations and that comparison and that word, it doesn't even apply to God. There's no, there's no need and there's no requirement requirement for the mercy to be manifested on creation i.e. there was no original dependence on God to do this number one wait let me finish number two the fact that God does do that and that Allah does show mercy to his creation after bringing them to existence is all within the remit of mercy it's not that that now has been created therefore Allah is now dependent on them to manifest his mercy otherwise God didn't have any obligation to have children or to do anything else especially like in Christian theology Can or I how people that? do so the, just one thing yeah. your idea and your analogy of dependence in the linguistic understanding on worldly creation can't apply to God because you're not applying because even the words of even the names of God you're saying Wadi, Wadith and Ghani these are hyperbolized qualities and attributes of God right can number one number no, two no, no, you're making it now separate all right, all right. can so, I, can so can I just reply to those two ahead, points the first point uh, there, there is a the, there is a hadith and I'm sure we can pull it up can we pull up the hadith where... Well, I can't respond to any okay, hadith okay. that's pulled up. Let's so, stick so, with no, the no, no, discussion. No, 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 I'm going... No, let, let me... No. Can we pull up the hadith where um, Muhammad says, that Allah says, that if you had not sinned, he would get rid of you and then create another creation that would sin so that he could display his mercy. So in that hadith that we're going to pull up for you with the reference, in that hadith, Allah is saying literally that if you hadn't sinned, I would have got rid of you, created something that would sin, so that I could show my mercy. In other words, Allah is acknowledging the dependence, that he needs creation to show his mercy. The word need? Well, one second, I didn't interrupt you. Okay. Please don't interrupt me. Okay. So that, 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 that addresses your first okay. point, because your texts are telling you that Allah is dependent for the transactional relationship. Second point, second point. I, I, I kind of forgot what your second point was because you interrupted me. Um, but you're the, the, so, so I'll just sort of recapitulate. If Allah is, um, is, if Allah is clearly uh, requiring a subject for mercy, and in your example, you, you talked about um, women and children showing their love. Firstly, I dismiss your characterization that love is weakness. Love is not weakness, love is strength. But what I would say to you is that your very examples demonstrate my point. You can't even conceive of mercy without two parties. And that means that within the very heart of Islamic theology is the requirement, the necessity of something else other than Allah for Allah to display his attributes and that contradicts the idea that Allah is completely free from any kind of dependence. Okay, so response to that is number one, that there's no obligation for us to even be in existence. Our existence and coming into being is in itself the greatest manifestation of God's mercy, of Allah's mercy in the first place. That's number one, because there is no onus on Allah to do anything and there was nothing that was a uh, factor which was influencing Allah to do whatever Allah decides to do as we know number one number two so the fact that we are even existing is in itself a manifestation of God's mercy number one number two number three you're saying that there's still the issue integral in this hadith or whichever the hadith you quote number one the necessity and need of God creating creation in order to manifest mercy is not quoted in that hadith and it's not quoted within those names so you That's know it, it. Uh, I know what so you know the hadith 
I'm familiar with it, but I can't go into detail of tafsir. But I will say okay. one thing. I will say one thing. That hadith does not mention the need and necessity. No, no, no. Need. No, what it well, says. No, let me finish. I'm good. You're interrupting me. Okay, but fair no, you're interrupting me. Okay, so number one, number three. Uh, Adan number two, three. So those hadith, these verses of the Quran and these names, you cannot deduce or infer from that necessary dependence of God for these attributes. The fact that we are created is a manifestation of God's mercy. Now, Thank you. is that mercy something that is dependent on us? No. Can God it be expressed could, without us? In any way that Allah wishes, absolutely. Okay, so and when you say us, what do you mean by us? Wait, 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 wait one creation? second, one second, one second. Let, let's do this logically because remember, yeah. the accusation is yeah. about a logical, a logical non sequitur statements within the Quran. Right. About, so we're talking just about. Oh dear. We've been alleged threat to kill Boris Johnson. Right. The government Boris. So. So the, 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 the point is, the subject of our conversation is Allah. The subject of the Quran's discourse is Allah. If I were to, if we, I were to describe you or anything else in a contradictory way, you would point out the contradiction. Muslims come to the park all the time, trying to attack and failing the Christian faith by what they say are contradictions. So you have established these principles in your polemics against the Christian faith. They are simply now being applied to what the Quran is saying about Allah. The, the reality is, unless you can give me an example of how mercy can be displayed without a subject, then you are acknowledging that Allah requires a subject to display his mercy, and that means there is a dependence. Okay, first thing is to, to rebuke your first point. People aren't here to criticize and condemn Christianity they do it all or the time. to make certain things like that. You're saying you've done that. I haven't done anything I never, like that. Sorry, when I say you, I mean well, the then, wider Dawah team. That's not me. And that's, I don't know of anyone that does that here anyway. I can that's name number two. Then you can do that separately. Number two, you're saying give an example of where the dependence of God is not manifested by the fact that his need to create creation. No, I didn't say that. What was your exact question? Then? My exact question was, Yeah. give me an example yeah. of mercy that does not require a subject. In this world? can't think of one there you go but this is not this worldly that we're talking about it's about God and God's attributes are fundamentally as I said hyperbolized number one yeah number two they're manifested in a way that is not necessarily dependent as we are dependent when we show mercy to our creation mm -hmm. you say that's a sign of weakness I didn't say I never a... and what never no, once no, no, you one said, second no, you never me. once did no, I say that did. this is a sign no, of weakness you said to never me once. that I said is a sign of weakness I know love is I a didn't. sign of strength you did no. you... I said love is okay, a sign of strength but decide. love is also a sign of dependence and weakness not weakness in the sense of a failing weakness but in the sense that you are therefore dependent on something else to show love mm. now for humanistic reasons why do we show love why do we show mercy because it's something that's inherent it's a recipe between the subject that you're saying mercy you're dependent on that there's some sort of personal gain because those attributes and those qualities don't apply to Allah when he shows Raham and mercy to his creation then to make an analogy of it being uh, uh, something that is ununderstandable in the worldly sense then therefore can't apply to God no. because the premise is wrong and this is my key objection okay. to what you're saying the premises that you're presenting for two are not analogous with each other Mercy in this world, yes, it shows dependence, it shows reciprocity, it shows need. Yep. That doesn't apply to God yep. because God doesn't show mercy in the way that we do. Okay. Yes, us showing mercy is actually a reflection of God himself as well. Can I reply to that? Well, okay, yeah, okay. because uh, you, you, you've, you've already... Okay, that's fine. And, and I really appreciate... I, already, no, no, it is. I really do appreciate the, the calm and civilized conduct. Unfortunately, we had an example earlier of Shamsi just bursting into a conversation. Allah doesn't own the bag, but he does own the matter. He does own the matter. But one second. Oh, Shamsi! 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 Why don't you have a conversation? Why don't you have a conversation, Shamsi, rather than being rude? And I really appreciate that you've not been like Shamsi. Um, but I, I, I want to point out that you, in, in the course of your reply, you admitted the point, which is that you can't think, even conceive of an example of mercy without a subject, which means that within your understanding of Allah's mercy, intrinsically buried deep in the heart of, uh, 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 of, Allah's, uh, of your understanding of Allah, is the fact that Allah requires a dependency to show his mercy it and I, I just what no 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 
You're people, you people, like that. people, people can make their own I mind up. People can make their own. I just, I just want to, I just want to read the hadith that we that, that's in question. It's from Sahih al Muslim, two seven four nine. By him whose hand is my life, if you, if you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of existence, and He would replace you by those who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah, and He would have pardoned them. So, in other words. He's getting rid, he's hypothetically in a thought experiment, getting rid of a sinless creation to create a creation that would sin so that he could show his mercy. So what's that, what's that proving? It's showing dependence. No, it's not. Because that's a hypothetical situation, number one. Number two, nowhere in the hadith, if you look at the Arabic, is the word necessity used, which is the rura or dependency. That's not used so in back, any of that back hadith. Back to the question, show me an example of mercy without a subject. Without a subject? Yeah. What, in this world? Yeah. Well, why is that necessarily going to prove your point of God needing that? Because Allah, yeah. Allah's mercy is yeah. displayed in this world, is it not? Yes, it is, but there's no And he is described as Al-Rahman for showing his mercy in this world, is it not? No, the, the, the quality of attribute of Rahman isn't dependent on the fact that he's created us. These are attributes of God before existence as well. How does he show it? How does he show what? How does he show his mercy? Well, in this world, yeah. in our time of creation, yeah. when we've been created, is through the fact that we exist. If there was no creation, could right. he show his mercy? These are hypothetical situations. Why could God not show it? They've been created. Who would he show it to? In in our in our in our existence, we are the uh, later line of creation that God has created. Who they would, have been creation before before him. The, 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 so that before all, us. but that just replaces one dependency with another one. Okay. But that doesn't presuppose the fact that you have those qualities and attributes. Just because there's no one there to necessarily manifest it on, doesn't mean that those qualities are not present in you. And the, the argument there. is not about whether God has the attribute. It's whether how it, they it, it, it. It's how it's manifested. Yeah. And the, the critique is yeah. that you are upholding two contradictory statements. That, first contradictory sta first Ghani, statement yes. is that he is Al Ghani, yeah. which means that he is free of any dependence whatsoever. Yes. I'm not being unfair there, am I? Well, no, that's the name of what he means. Right, so I'm, 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 I'm right in what I'm saying. And what you're trying to say, I get but what you're then, trying to say. But then, we can't even conceive of Allah displaying his mercy without a subject, which means that that contradicts Al Ghani, because that means that there is something there by necessity and requirement. Not necessarily, and I'll tell you well, why. Well, explain how. Well, because there's two or three ways to look at this. Number one, as I said, the manifestation of Can we take them in turn? You, like. When you give number one, number two, number three, can yeah. I take take them in turn? Yeah. So okay. okay. So, but firstly, the manifestation of God's mercy is not dependent on the creation. That could be manifested in any way that God wanted to do it. And I'm not saying that there wasn't a possibility that God showed it in a way that we don't know, right? This is known in Allah's knowledge. But yes, creation came into existence, and God manifested His mercy in one way upon us as creation in numerous different ways. That doesn't necessitate that does not necessitate dependence. Okay. Can I reply to that bit? Yeah, but I, I know why. Let me finish my point. Okay. So I get the 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 rebuttal that's going to come. That then how is that manifested? If it's an attribute of God's, then there must be another way they can be manifested without dependence on us. And I disagree with that because, as I said, if you manifest mercy in a way on a creation, that is yourself showing mercy to that creation by the fact that it's coming to existence. Just because it wasn't there doesn't mean a that you need something to manifest that mercy on, or that it's not an attribute of yours. And it doesn't necessarily necessitate that you have to manifest that mercy. Either. Okay, can I, can you, I, can, person, sorry, one second. can I reply can, to those points? I, I'll give you one. You're making a number of points. I'm not, but there's a last thing. There's a point that you can redress in your rebuttal. You can be merciful and you have a quality of mercy in you. Yeah? Do you have to necessarily manifest that on something else? Okay, can I reply that? So the argument is not about whether yeah. Allah has the attribute of Al Rahman. Yeah. The argument is not about whether Allah must yeah. express his mercy. Okay. So those are red herrings. They've actually got nothing to do with the, the critique at all. It's the you've just you, 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 you've just thrown them out there, but they're not part of the critique at all. The critique is firmly and simply about two contradictory statements. Contradictory statement number one: Allah is free of any kind of dependence. Contradictory statement number two: To display His mercy requires a subject. No, I mercy, mercy requires a subject. You can't even think of an example of mercy without a subject proving the point. Meaning that within Islamic theology, there are contradictory statements about Allah. Another example, going back to the first one, and then maybe we should sort of wrap this up unless you've got some yeah. really knockdown um, statement. 
Allah is al warith Allah is al maliki If Allah owns everything, there is nothing for him to inherit. If he is al warith then that means there is something for him to inherit. But if he owns everything, he can't inherit what he already owns. Yeah, no, this, this now requires Arabic linguistics, which I'm not going to get into. Um, Am I wrong in saying that the root of the Arabic word, yeah. warith, waritha, waritha, is connected to the idea of inheritance? Yeah, but not inheritance. Am I same. wrong? No, because the word no. inheritance is a translation, and I can't say that it's applicable in the same way. Because what you're doing is you're applying humanistic understanding of these terminologies to a, to a being which is supersedes human understanding. Yeah, supersedes, supersedes the, the, the human classical application. the classical Muslim understanding is that al warif merely means that Allah survives everything else. Right. But that isn't that isn't an inheritor. An inheritor That's takes possession of something he doesn't own. Saying. So to apply the linguistic meaning in common vernacular usage in English is not really right because English. But this is common Arabic enunciation. It's not common. It's not common. It's common. It's, it, this is because the root of the, the Arabic the word. You acknowledged and it yourself. Warith and mirath and these words. There's different, as I said, hyper, hyperbolic forms of it. And the meaning when it comes to God's attributes is more deep and more intense and needs more interpretation. I can't say it on camera and say that that's exactly what the meaning is and it contradicts that. Okay. Okay. Rahman is, 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 I, I want to I want to come to this interpretation thing okay. because I think we we kind of wrap it up there. We'll go ahead. Okay. So 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 I, I, if you had stayed a bit longer, I would have liked to have moved on to things like what the the, the, the right of the scholars to interpret. Because I mean, my, my, thing is, my thing is, my thing is, my thing is. I'd like to have a discussion with you about something else. Sorry. But yeah, you're more than we can do that now if you want. Slavery. You want to do that now? With slavery, I was interested in. You, you want to do that I, now? I, I don't mind slavery. Yeah. Okay. But slavery was interesting when so, I heard so, you saying that. So, slavery. so, so, my let, let, let me let, let me wrap up my yeah, point. Yeah, then. Yeah, wrap up. Because the the point is that there's a circular logic to Islam, which is that the scholars tell us that this verse of the Quran means this and then you ask them well where is that justification in the Quran okay. and then the scholars point to a verse right. so the, the the scholars are using their authority to tell you that the Quran tells you that they have the authority to up. interpret oh. the Quran and that's a circular logic and I am yet to meet the Muslim that can show me where Muhammad gives the definitions of the 99 names of Allah can you show me where Muhammad tells you what al warith means where muhammad tells you what al um, ghania means can you show me the hadiths where muhammad says that there may be some but i'm not a could, half could, of could you maybe look some up and come back well, I could, not 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 right now yeah, well, you know be. in your own time i'd like okay. you to because okay. it seems to me that the later scholars of islam mm. when they encountered greek philosophy mm. particularly when they encountered greek philosophy it was a catalyst to the, the later Muslims to start developing their theology and they did it all after Muhammad, which is Bidda. I mean, <laughs> basic fundamentals of the religion have been expounded on uh, by the Quran and by the Hadith, but no, interpolations after the Quran and from the Hadith have not been done by scholars. So, so show me There's a definition. Hadith where Muhammad gives the definition of Allah. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into it. I'm not going to, I can't hear yeah. off the top of my head. I'm not Hafid of Hadith, I'm not a memorizer. Because I, 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 I've tried myself and I'm not saying that I've done a perfect research because I haven't, but I have found plenty will, of scholars, I I found plenty of scholars that give a definition of al-warith, but I've never found a scholar that quotes a hadith where Muhammad gives the definition of al-warith. Right, okay. And for me, this is a problem because Muslims are not meant to I, practice bidda, and bidda is doing something Muhammad never did. It's innovated in the religion. Yeah, and if you're inventing definitions of the uh, titles of Allah no. that Muhammad didn't give. But those, those names are in the Quran. Okay, that so, can't be definitive. so show me, show me where the Quran defines Al Warith. Then, um, again, I'm not happy with the Quran. I can't, I can't, I can't. Yeah. Warith. Wait, well, Warith. Yes. Yeah, so show me, show me where, show me where Muhammad so, or the Quran tells you. What, I, I've got a Quran. No, no, no. I'll, I'll bring. I'll, I'll, I'll research into one that I'll bring. Okay. And then I'll, I'll have my own. Uh, okay. Own version, but I can't respond to that on camera. Just like yeah. That. Right. And now. Not enough research. Now yeah, I'm no, cold. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. All right, yeah. It's good seeing you. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll have another. What's your name? Zafar. Zafar. That was Zaffer. a really nice conversation, Zafar. For people that have nice conversations with me, I always like to give them a gift so I'd like to give you a gift if I may okay just, a, just no it's only a book don't worry it's oh, nothing wait. bad oh, can you read Arabic uh, yeah. you're an Arabic speaker yeah I'm an Arabic speaker I can read it. but you can read it 
Now, when you say read, because sometimes I get this with Muslims, they say they can read Arabic, and what they mean is they can read but they don't understand. Can you read and understand I'm Arabic? I'm fluent in my understanding. Oh, then in that I, case. I, I, I can't read the day. I was going to give you a book in Arabic, but there's no point. Your English is probably better. So here's my gift to you, sir. God bless you. And um, yeah, it'd be nice to talk to you again. Okay, thank you. Thank All right, you. take care. Thank you, sir. So, guys, like. The, 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 uh, no, no, they don't do that. They don't do that. The Dawah channels don't do that. They don't do that. There you go. There you go. So, so what you got is that Zafar pointed out something. Are you listening, Shamsi? And hopefully JC will do a cutback to what Zafar said. <laughs> Zafa pointed out yeah. that in Arabic, all, all Arabic words come from three triliteral roots, right? Yeah. So the word here come is, 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 is waratha, right? Yeah. Now the word warith is one of Allah's name, it's a hyperbole, it means extreme, right? Extreme form of whatever it is. And in this case, it means waratha has different meanings. I'll give you an example of where the word warith has been used. Al ulama a waratatul anbiya. This means that the scholars are inheritors of the Prophet. Yeah. So I was not lying, Shamsi. I was not lying. And the reality is that if your argument is that by calling Allah the inheritor, he is simply someone who survives, then I would point out to you that's the wrong description. Exactly. Call him the survivor rather than the inheritor. Um, it is simply an example of the fact that the Quranic description of Allah is self-contradictory. And the Quran states that if, um, if it is self-contradictory, then it's not from Allah. So there you go. That's a wrap up.